Okay, so we had uh, discussed it here uh, using blocking and non-blocking statements, where uh, blocking statement has equal to the non-blocking is less than or equal to, and we saw these values as to how they are going to uh, you know, propagate from one variable to another variable. Okay, and accordingly how the clock pulses are generated. So continuing the discussion, we will now see how uh, you know it is used for uh, this particular model. Okay, so module and uh, module's name is two gates input output. A register and utilities D and E. Okay. Uh, at always at star. Now when we use star, okay, this gets activated, which means everything is activated. All the parameters uh, are, uh, you know, they they do come under sensitivity list. Okay. Input and uh, in outputs have to be of type wire. So which means your input and in outputs have to be of type wire. So normally we have seen wire which is used intermediately between two components, between two uh, you know gates. Output ports can be either of wire or reg. So outputs are normally reg and inputs are wire. So here you can see that D and E. Okay, D and E are declared as registers. As they are at the left hand side so here you can see they are towards the left hand side okay so D and uh, therefore D cannot be declared as in out so since we have used it as register either we use it as register or only in out we cannot use it as both okay so whenever the sensitive list this is very important please make note this is very important whenever the sensitivity list contains star the always block gets triggered for any input signal changes so any changes that happens in the input signals um, it will immediately be tracked and accordingly uh, there is a triggering that happens so anything any change uh, immediately gets activated so that's the speciality of having star in the bracket okay. previously we have seen uh, we have just used positive edge so whenever there is a positive edge uh, you know it has been triggered suppose there is a negative edge then the action doesn't get triggered okay so that is what you have to understand so since here we have star so star means any changes in the input signal then only uh, then immediate trigger happens okay so that is what you have to understand so that's the speciality of using star uh, these are some important points to be noted okay very important points where wire does not store any information whereas register stores information now I will be using this for your uh, you know, exam point of view where you will be asked questions based on this okay dash does not store information so your answer is going to be y okay. and uh, the initial value okay which means the default value of wire is always z z is nothing but high impedance so what do you mean by high impedance normally you have seen in your labs where uh, whenever there is a high impedance they, you will see a red colored line okay so that is your high impedance and then uh, for reg for reg it is x x means unknown because we do not know if the value is zero or one so it is x or don't be Uh, 
the operator equal now as i told you equal is used for your blocking statements right so now in this blocking statements uh, it consists of equal to and then it is always inside uh, a keyword called always whereas non-blocking is outside always which means less than or equal to so this is the symbol this is the symbol and uh, this one has uh, no use as an assignment operator outside always so inside always we always use a blocking statement which is equal to and outside always we use plus than or equal to okay then uh, the left hand side elements inside the procedural blocks have to be declared as register now towards the left hand side which means this side you have to declare it as register okay but register data type cannot be present at the LHS of a continuous statement. So suppose you are using a continuous statement. Okay, here you are using a continuous statement. You cannot use it as at the left hand side. It should always be at the right hand side. Next for uh, synthesizable codes, it is better to use non-blocking assignments for sequential logic and blocking assignments for combinatorial logic but this is a very important point blocking is normally used for combination and uh, non-blocking non-blocking is used for sequential logic okay so this is one such example where uh, you know you write a uh, HTML code and then using tech library okay dot lib dot lib files we combine them both and this is given as an input to our synthesis tool so here what is our synthesis tool silence so this synthesis tool inside it actually has a netlist so netlist is nothing but a combination of gates it has hand gate and then uh, you know all the combinations of inputs and outputs so this is how the schematic this is the schematic of how it actually functions code library synthesis synthesis is again involving netlist now we will see how we can model a flip-flop using always block okay now using uh, flip-flop which means flip-flop is a memory element right now how can we use the always block so that's the question so let us take d flip flop for example clock is the input d is the input and q is the output so what is the function of d flip flop whatever is the input the same thing comes across your output but then there is a small delay in that right <coughs> sometimes <coughs> Sometimes D flip flop is also called as delay flip flop. So inputs are always equal to outputs. So you can have always now here see what is your sensitivity list clock. So what side of clock positive edge of clock. Okay. And uh, this is a non blocking statement D is assigned to Q after end statement. So after end whatever value of D is there that is passed to Q. Q bar will be opposite of Q. Okay. Now here, this is also a block diagram. Okay. So rising edge of the clock occurs. Q is equal to D. If the flip flop has a delay of five, then at hash five. Okay. After five nanoseconds, it happens. If Q changes when D changes, then it is transparent latch. So which means whenever there is a change in q and d then it is called a transparent latch so in this code q changes when g is equal to 1 if g now if g is equal to which means it is a conditional if g is equal to 1 then only you pass the data from d to q that is what we are trying to tell here okay 
either g or d okay or gd are acceptable in the sensitivity list so here if i want to use g or d or i can use a comma in between okay so both can be used g or d or g comma d both can be used as sensitivity list that's the format of writing a sensitivity list now see this code below so we are using something called active low so what is active low i'm using active low because it is negated here not of if not of control okay so that's why it is called a active low now these are all conditions when you see if it's a condition if g is equal to 1 then only this condition will happen here we are seeing if not of control n okay so which means it is a active low condition so if this condition is true then only this value is passed to q else what is going to happen else this value is passed to q if it if the condition doesn't matter so if else so this is an if else loop and all this happens when during the rising edge of the clock during the positive edge of the clock now let us increase the complexity of the circuit and you can see how the code changes okay just go through the circuit go through the code and try to analyze what's happening So here you can see that uh, we have C1, C2, C3. If it is true, then S1 is true. If it is false, then it will go to the next condition. If this condition is true, then S3, S4. This condition is false, it goes to the next condition. So for true one equation, for false one equation. So how are we going to write for this? now if c1 if c1 which means if c1 is true to begin okay s1 s2 and else if so we have used if and then else if else if first we used c1 next we are using c2 begin s3 s4 and again i can use else if i don't have to use else the last statement is going to be else so this else will be for the last condition which is 7 and 8 in between i have to keep using else if and else if okay start with if and then keep keep on going with else if only in the last i'm going to use else so if c1 this condition else if c2 is correct this condition if c3 is correct this condition else the last statement okay so this is the template that you can find here okay this condition then you will have sequential statements then uh, zero or more else if clauses can be included else if right we have used one two two else if and at the last we are going to use else right and then we are going to end it with end so this is just a template so in exam i might just give you this and i might tell you to write a code so this is going to be your answer right 
so let us now see your jk flip flop i think all of you know this jk flip flop just try to analyze this particular slide check if your outputs are correct across the table put table So are the values correct for JK flip flop? So in JK flip flop, one is going to be Q and Q and bar. Or Q and Q bar, right? Okay. So you have J, K, clock. Then you have Q. Okay. Fine. So I think you know this grouping, isn't it? For zero zero, what's going to happen? Zero zero one. Okay. So Q and J K uh, with respect to their outputs. So you will have to know their characteristic equation. Okay, characteristic equation is used in order to model. Okay, in order to model the J K flip flop. Now what is this R N S N? These are all nothing but present inputs. Okay, and your clear clear inputs, okay, which means. You can clear the inputs. Active low. Why is it called active low? Because there is a bubble here for clock. Clock and there is a bubble. Right. So it's an active low. And uh, this happens at negage or falling into the clock. And this is going to be a characteristic equation. Q plus. Next step is going to be J Q bar plus K bar Q. This is your characteristic equation. J K Q. So when it is zero zero, it is going to be in the previous state. Zero one, it follows J. One zero, J is followed. One one, whatever was there in the previous state, it's going to be complement of that. Okay, so this is your J K flip flop. So how do we write a code for this J K flip flop? You have seen the uh, truth table. You have seen the circuit. Okay, now uh, you have seen the block diagram. You have seen the truth table. You have seen the K map. You have seen the characteristic equation. Now we can start building the code. So what is going to be the code? JK flip flop module module name, inputs and outputs. So here we're going to specify what is my input. S N R N J K clock. Okay, S N R N J K clock outputs are going to be Q and Q N Q and Q N so register is going to be Q in intermediate okay I have not shown here in the block diagram so that is going to be a intermediate signal okay. so declarations will happen and then I start with always. From the clock, or R N or S N. So here I can use comma, negative edge clock, comma R N, comma S N, just like how we saw previously. Begin. If if this is uh, true, which means if not of R N, active low value of R N, then R hash eight after eight nanoseconds, this value is assigned. Okay. Else if this value, this parameter is true, then one is assigned to the Q internal. So that is nothing but your internal signal. Else, even if this condition is not true, this condition is not true, else, and after 10 nanoseconds, I'm going to put the characteristic equation. Okay. J Q bar K 
bar q then i will assign internal signal to q and uh, negated value to q so this is fine okay and uh, these parameters are fine module module name in the packet you're going to put input comma output then you're going to mention what are your inputs then you're going to mention what are your outputs and then here here you're going to put what uh, what is going to be your sensitivity list okay so once you put your sensitivity list then you can start off with the loop so the main part of the program lies here from if to end okay so this is the heart of the program okay now i have even mentioned the reasons why you know it is an internal signal because the right hand side cannot have an output identifier and in out type cannot be declared as a register so either we can use it as a register or we can use it as an in out we cannot use them as both in out and register next uh, 8 nanoseconds is that uh, time which i told you I, I spoke to you about the delta time so just a standard value we can even we can even give any other value apart from e that's fine and uh, 10 nanoseconds represents the time taken for q to change so this q so after 10 nanoseconds this q the values are going to be assigned to q okay so in the if statement either this one or this one are acceptable okay either i can use uh, in the if statement not of rn or this one i can even represent not of rn negated rn can also be represented as one bit uh, value is binary type is binary value is zero so both are same okay negation of rn or rn is equal to one bit type binary value zero so keep this in mind now we will see how always block can be used <laughs> so always blocks use event control statements so here now we are going to learn new new things which is nothing but event control okay when sensitive list is not specified or not required event control statements such as wait can be used okay now what is this wait wait is nothing but it is telling uh, it is trying to give some uh, predefined value so let us take delta value as an example for waiting just like how we saw 5 nanoseconds previously and here we saw 8 nanoseconds so that is going to be your value okay that you are going to use for waiting so which is a which is a normal value or predefined value by the system when sensitive list is not specified or not required even control statements such as wait can be used so i can use wait in contrast when wait statements are included the always block cannot have sensitivity list so one important thing to keep in mind here is <laughs> whenever i'm using wait statement i cannot use sensitivity list inside the always statement okay so what is the uh, what is the sensitivity list just like how we had here this is your sensitivity list so we cannot have this when we use something called wait okay so so just have a look at this slide
so can you find the changes in the previous one okay we used to have sensitivity list which means those parameters are mentioned in the bracket but here after using wait statement we are not using any sensitivity list which means we are not having any uh, parameters in the bracket now here we can see that in our wait statements are level sensitive level sensitive control it can also be used for handshaking now what is handshaking signals let's take for example you have a microprocessor who is very fast and then you have an interfaced device who is very slow now microprocessor will transmit data at a higher rate and this interfaced device okay will not be able to accept data at that rate so what is going to happen we have to tell or we have to tell the a processor to hold on for some time to reduce its speed of transmission so we uh, use wait statements in that point of time uh, when you study your microprocessors okay 8086 so that time you will actually come across uh, this kind of situation where you will be using a statement called NOP no operation okay no operation is used just to reduce the speed of transmission so data so that is about the handshaking handshaking between two processes okay so here you see this code will always begin after 10 nanoseconds uh, negation of clock value is given to clock so after 10 nanoseconds here what i'm going to do i'm not going to use any hash 10 i will just use wait whatever data is there that is given to memory okay, data in is given to memory and again i wait for you know uh, negation of write so the memory whatever value is there in memory that is used for or that is given to data out so data in goes into the memory waits for some time and then write this is nothing but read right so the opposite of write is read so negation of write which is read so data whatever is in the memory that is read out so that is your data out so this is your simple code and in that way you can analyze things Now refer to this code here, which is towards your left hand side. Okay, so in this code, you have always begin when reset is equal to one. Now keep in mind whenever you know uh, these are called sequential statements, then uh, you are at your positive clock, which means at the rising uh, rising edge of the clock. This is going to be executed so until there is a positive edge of the clock uh, you know it's not going to get executed so this becomes your sensitivity list right so suppose that there is a you know lowering of a clock which means uh, if the clock is going from a higher value to a lower value then uh, you know it's not going to happen it, it becomes insensitive so sensitivity list is something where it responds to changes okay so similarly you can analyze these uh, codes here using a star instead of using the sensitivity statement right begin if add is equal to one sum a given equation carry a given equation end this is this is an improper way of writing here uh, it is always good to use else else if this is equal to one then sum and carry if not what is going to happen so we have to give both the cases if and else then only it's going to work out okay so i have written the implications also what is going to happen with the first code and what is going to happen with the second code just go through 
So in the first code, it is going to happen. It will compile, but it cannot simulate correctly. Okay. So the, those are your options that I'm giving. What is going to happen with code one and code two? So in the first one, no? in the first one, it will compile, but it will not simulate correctly because the carry statement has no dependency on add signal. Now you have carry carry is equal to x and y it has no dependency on the add signal so add is there add is equal to one sum carry so so add is only used for sum suppose if this case is not true then we have to go for something else right which is happening here but it's not happening right so there is no dependency so it will compile but it will not simulate correctly so that's the option that's the correct answer now in the second case for this code it will not compile because when compiler gets to else what is happening it does not find the corresponding if before which means if is there then else normally how is our loop see if else if else statement end but here if else end so it, it is kind of incomplete right so it will not compile because when compiler gets to else it does not find the corresponding if so this condition only is different and this condition only is different both codes can be corrected by adding begin and end so properly if i use begin and end then it will be fine so data types what are data types the way that we can represent data for example we can see one group is vegetables the other group are fruits so similarly here i can see one set of data uh, is bifurcated under net and the other set of data can be bifurcated under variables what are the keywords used under net i have listed them wire tri-state wired and wired or in short it's also called as land and war and keywords are register, time, integer, real, real time. So this is important here. And and what? Please note down. Please note down. And and what? So WAND and WAR indicate that the net is being driven by more inputs, which means you just do not have one, two inputs or three inputs, but you have multiple inputs. The synthesis tool automatically generates respective gates. So you know, you remember when you were using this uh, Zynings tool, you had something called text schematic and RTL schematic. So whenever you use that option, you used to find that, you know, uh, a set of data used to always pop out. For example, let me show you the previous slide. You will see. Huh? So something like this you will be able to see. Okay, when you do an RTL schematic or text schematic. Yes, ah, you have it here already. Yes, example of a war. So, how it is getting generated. So, I have written a, a module, a, a code here, and then a wrong code here. Okay, and a general code. How I can write a general code? Okay, so just look into it module parameters 
inputs outputs more p p means what it has multiple number of inputs assign c why it has multiple number of inputs because p is equal to x and y p is equal to negation both are there and again p is given to z right multiple functions now let us see the wrong code second program p2 input output instead of war i use wire wire i cannot use because that's an intermediate thing which connects between one circuit and another circuit so it doesn't store any value right so it becomes a wrong code so it will not remember what is p because p is a wire wire means there's no memory remember i told you previously when we started off with flip flop <coughs> wire does not store information register stores information that is important so only if you are using the keyword register then only it's going to work out okay now how can i write a general code for this a third program x y z input x y output z wire p and q assign p is equal to x and y q is equal to uh, x bar and y bar z is equal to pp so whatever is the value of p at that point of time it's taken okay but i just cannot use only p as wire instead i should be using it as war now these are some bifurcations with respect to operators arithmetic relational unary okay you can see what is involved under them So in unary operators, you have plus, minus, logical negation, bitwise negation, and reduction, or okay, all this. Then under arithmetic, you have these. Okay, so just go through those. So I think we will uh, probably stop here, or probably we'll see another slide. Okay, so this comes under unary. All this I think you are very much familiar. Less than, greater than. Logical left shift, logical right shift. Less than or equal to. Logical types equal to not equal to logical and logical or then bitwise manipulations conditional operators right i think in the next class we will try to see with problems with examples i will explain how uh, you know these operations are done okay so we will stop here as of now and uh, 
we will continue in the next class okay right